Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team, ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. Radiant team, ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time.
entire team down. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Winter Wyvern. Dire team pick. Radiant team pick. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team big. Thank you, Paul. I'm Gareth. Joining me is Blitz, and we're here for Team Liquid against Evil Geniuses. Now, their draft, it's uh, a bit of an interesting one. Ancient Apparition is a hero that I've been hammering on about for a little bit, and you shot me down the other day, and I, I did come around to your way of thinking that you blow your ulti, you don't land it, you lose a team fight. But apparently, Kuroki, he's picked it up fifth, and he's got something planned yeah. in this game. Sometimes... 
kind of just decides he's going to do something a little bit odd. Was one of the few people that were picking E.T. when it was a bad hero. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, it just seems like Liquid likes to throw that curveball out. And it is good against the DP and the Winter Wyvern, obviously synchronizing pretty well with the Cold Feet and the Ultimate. But I think the speed of Bounty Hunter plus Darkseer, especially in the offlane, is going to do too much. And how about the Chaos Knight for Evil Geniuses as the final pick there? I mean, it's, a, it's an armlet-carrying hero, and it's something that we've talked a lot about on the panel for the past couple of days. Tanky strength heroes by armlet has been incredibly strong and easy to build into. Incremental items, slowly but surely, you get you know, armor, stats, damage, attack speed, the whole lot. Uh, what do you think about the hero in general? Because it, it, there's no wisp to pair with. I think it's quite good, though, against Liquid's heroes. If you look at what they have so far, it's a lot of single-target focus. Uh, with the Lone Druid, Tusk, Beastmaster, Dragon Knight, that's almost all centered around going for single target control. Of course, Dragon Knight, once he has Dragon Form up, does okay because he has some AoE, but even then, that's not ideal. So that's why you take the CK. And both teams, you heard it with what PPD said, right? He lets it slip. He says, whoever plays faster is going to win this game. He doesn't mean mechanically. I think he means more whoever te sets the tempo of this game and whoever's just going to play, uh, whoever takes control sooner is going to win. And Honestly, I think EG have it in that advantage. I think this Bounty Hunter plus Darkseer is liable to do a lot of damage to the safe lane. I think AA is going to have trouble in this game because AA is notorious for you want to play around that Ice Blast, you want to try to get ahead with it, but the type of lanes that EG have, I think they're more set up for success. Ancient Apparition is one of those heroes where you do want to try and hit that level 6 as fast as possible, just you know, stacking and pulling. A little bit of lane control with your chilling touch and all that to try and zone people out, but outside of that you don't have any really hard disables or stuns to control up this pull, but Darkseer already, EG, having a little bit of a sparring session with the Hundred Bear, but Liquid, you want it fast fighting, and it's going to be a 5v5 at the top rune spot, and pretty much as Fear is dusted up, and the Iron Shell back is turning onto Jirax, but he is gone. Fear's bounty. The first casualty of war and Team Liquid get double bounty rooms. Yeah, and as a result, with that first blood, they're going to feel really comfortable about this lane. Still, Fear doesn't really care too much. This is more benefits Liquid than it hurts EG, as he's just going to bounce around the map anyways. Bounty Hunter being notorious for a hero that doesn't really matter how many times it dies, because eventually you get level 6, track comes online, and then the real game begins. Fear did go for the Orb of Venom. We've seen a few people try the, you know, the brown boots and move yourself from lane to lane a little bit faster. Does this indicate he wants to focus on a specific lane and harassing a specific hero? I think it's more just good in a game like this where you can harass Bot out of quite a lot like he is right now. You can go help that top lane where we've already talked about how AA isn't the best support. Oh yeah. Kuroki, he will continue, just trying to do this. Pulling that lane equilibrium back, and Jirax, the Tusk, is up here with dust and smoke. But Fata, like you said, he's pushed far off his lane and can't get close to the wave thanks to Spirit Siphon, as well as Fear, hanging around with yeah. Invis and the Orb of Venom. But how's the bottom lane doing? Mind control on that Beastmaster. He's got Quelling Blade, Stout Shield. He's looking pretty happy down here. He can trade hits with PPD. But AUI, he says, no, no more board for you. Oh, nice little deny there. Mind control controls it up. But uh, Fear, he went for the bounty. Uh, nice little courier snipe, but there's no courier coming. That's a Still sitting on 400 gold. Up at top, Bulba getting zoned out right now. Still only level one. He hasn't had an iota of experience yet. Doesn't even have that surge, and that's what's usually going to allow this Darkseer to play up in this lane, even though they don't have any disables. Kuroki and this Tusk are just making sure that he's not really getting anything out of the lane, and this is what you want out of a lane which features this sort of safe tri-lane. You're devoting a lot to just shutting out this one hero. You make damn sure he gets absolutely nothing. Yes, zero experience. Actually zero. Now, do you maybe look towards farming this offlane camp and maybe try to just get your level two from that? The thing is about uh, offlane Darkseer that most people should know by now is if you get him to go to the jungle, you've already kind of won against the Darkseer because this hero is meant to Pressure keep... lanes? Exactly. You don't want to exactly go to the jungle, even though it seems a little bit counterintuitive because you can just ion shell yourself. It's not very fast uh, to farm with it and more than anything, part of the reason why uh, you pick this hero is to challenge the offlane. Usually control up those lanes well. Bulba, he will hit level 2 from the double range creeps that have stacked up for himself. So that surge is finally available and the only thing that will stop him from running away will be that Tusk Snowball Ice Shard. So we'll see where exactly Jirax will be heading. But still, holding on to that Smoke of Deceit and maybe going towards the mid lane with Kuroki. Yeah, and there they head. Moving themselves across, and of course, we've seen time and time again Death Prophets struggle once they do die a couple of times in lane. 
And uh, against the DK, these two heroes are quite similar in the regards that if one of them leaves the lane, you know, to go and take tier one up on the safe lane, the other one can maybe pressure the mid lane tower. Yeah, and fear right now TPing back mid. They are going to go for this as Jerex has the angle possibly on the high ground. Bada is bottling up. They really want this here. Smoke pumps are going for the snowball. They are shot down. So Maley's caught. Well, they're taking him down slowly but surely for the spirit side of Maley. Catches the kill. PPD has arrived to make a turn. And he I lose Jira as well. Two for one. At the very least, they get the AA, and that was really nicely prepped by Liquid, but still, well executed maneuver from the top lane, and EG, they seemed bad, but it just wasn't strong enough. Yeah, there's not a lot of defensive capabilities, as he doesn't have that early level of Cold Embrace that typically won't see. Opting to go for the second level of Splinter Blast, probably gonna grab it at level four, but that's still a decently farmed Winter Wyvern. She's got a decent amount of levels. Meanwhile, Kuro, gonna accompany Fada up to this top rent. Try to secure him something. And CS advantage still heavily favoring Sumail right now. Tripling up almost on the TK. Yeah. I was really surprised when they were showing the hexagons that the RU Hubcasters made and they gave Sumail an 8 and they gave Fada a 9. And this is a guy who won TI5 off the back of most of these farming mids and he's playing a DP right now, doing quite well against this DK. Yeah, yesterday against Virtus Pro, you know, you, you saw in that three game series that Samael maybe had a little bit of an off game when they did lose to VP, but he came back so strong, showing G who was boss and actually completely outmaneuvering him in that mid lane. But just look at this, it's it's what, a 2v3 mid at the moment? You have the Tusk behind the DK with that saving capability, just waiting for EG to make the first move, but fear. He doesn't want to ramble along towards mid. He's actually trying to leech experience from mind control and, and succeeding. Be greatly there. Might even snipe out a little ball. No. Fall after it. He'll get himself up to level three. So he's got yeah. the 1 1 1 across. Well, Fast takes that spirit siphon to the face again. Uh, such an annoying spell. Sumail just spamming out. With that region bottled, and yeah, even with the slight nerfs to it, where it doesn't pierce the magic community anymore and it doesn't grant vision up, it's still incredibly strong and harassing. Against most of these melee cores, you're going to be able to get the full duration off. Dragon Knight opting to not go for the stun early. Just grabs a level of it at 5. Percentage based HP max removal, not too shabby. Now, a Radiant Observer Ward, which was over towards the Dire Ancients, was just de warded. Oh, he's probably looking for maybe mind control stacking up or farming across into this large camp, which he's doing now. A nice little awareness there. Jirax just wanders over. Now, how, how can you tell when that area is warded up? Is it, it wasn't blocking camps. It was, is it just uh, an intuition thing? Yeah, it's usually one of those situations where if you watch the enemy team uh, play a few games, you can kind of get a sense of how they're going to ward, especially EG. Got some patterns that Liquid seem comfortable with, but... I guess against a Bounty Hunter as well, you don't want to get sniped on low HP. Don't have any of those unlucky little scenarios. Right now, Gold and XP lead going the way of Liquid, but... You don't really count that quite yet. As soon as the Bounty Hunter, again, can't stress this enough, once BH hits 6... Things can swing so drastically. Exactly. And that's why, even though he hasn't been able to accomplish too much early on... At some point, concentration will slip, you might forget that sentry ward, all it takes is one sloppy fight. A couple of tracks and all of a sudden that gold starts flowing in. Now, AUI down in bottom lane, the Chaos Knight, he is heading into that armlet. He's not too far away, honestly. Is that another timing that EG are looking for, maybe to start these fights a little bit earlier on? Most likely. Gonna wait for Samuel to grab a few levels too, and try to get your Darkseer back into the game right now. Bobo, just hit level 5. Probably gonna wait for him to grab something. He's not looking too bad now. Level 5, nearly level 6, Soul Ring, Magic Wands, and... Uh, head into those kind of healing sustain items with the uh, boars and hawks all scouting out over into the Radiant Jungle, though. I wonder what Jurax is up to, because Beastmaster, Mind Control, he's not level 6 yet, 7 minutes in, and this is something that maybe we kind of expect him to have that Primal Roar available, have his Brown Boots now, but... Book is still obviously a pipe dream for him, while EG start to group up at top. They've got a smoke over on Peter and Bulba, as well as Fear. They are a deadly combo in their own right. The Bounty and the Darks here with the Ion Shell Invis comboing up really nicely. Uh, like you said, against the AA, who is slow as all hell. Yeah, they might find the angle here is Fear. Gonna run into Matama Man, who does have his ultimate available. Now they're gonna rotate AUI up here too. They're gonna smoke now and... Oh, that's what they would have no for. idea of this, but 
probably gonna have to go on a Kuro. Who's already hiding by his tower, and but Tunnel Man might get spotted out, but instead it's Veer who's gonna head north, and maybe if they make this full rotation around... Bulba's Good. smoke popped, and he knows that someone's over there, but... EG, oh the ar man. armlet arrived on the Chaos Knight, and Matsu, you're right, this lone druid might get actually seen, but a good Savage Roar sends them back. Jirak Snowball with the Ice Blast, Kuro Shiki hits off the way UI. There's the armor for the cold feet, jump back in, kills off the tusk, but he won't lose his life. The attack from the lone druid caught him out, and Martha, that's a double damage room. That's a DK absolutely ripping your ball, but the, the shreds, and you're right. Death Prophet has arrived at the party, turns it back into the Dragon Knight, and the ladies are here. Well, they're ready to fight. That bear. Martu thinking about the deny. A liquid. Three for one. So well done though by EG is all they lose is their Chaos Knight, who is your lead farmer in the game, but more importantly than that, you get some farm onto some mail as a result of him picking up some of these assists and grabbing the kill on the Dragon Knight, slowing him down even further. All he at all he's at right now is 33 CS. Not really looking in the best of shape. PPD doesn't even go down there in that fight. She's grabbing a healthy chunk of experience, almost level 5. That's the thing with the Ancient Apparition, the Ice Blast looks good onto one target. You're like, right, we've got this kill, lads, and then you realize there are four other heroes of EG to contend with. The good news, though, is that Mind Control pushed this bottom lane all the way out, and this is going to open up the map a little bit for Liquid. Is They're going to have to send somebody to deal with that, and AUI pressuring up this top lane. And PPD showing at bottom, this is going to enable Mind Control to continue to further get a little bit of farm as he's already closing in close to his Necrobook 1. On top of that, grabs his level 7 and recovers into this game quite nicely. They know the Winter Wyvern's bottom, they know the Chaos Knight's up at top. He has a TP, so can react to things. And Liquid, we're considering maybe a dive into mid tier 1, but I'll be worried about who's going to be coming in to turn that around. And they're just going to be warding up into the Radiant Jungle for now. Yeah, they place sure. three wards down here. Oh, that's insane. Yeah, that's usually one too many, but not even getting a tower, a ward behind the tower at as okay, mid. Right, going some mail. And the control with the ice blast on top, and it looks like they've got the damage to kill us. So oh, I'm getting pretty low though. Are thinking about going back in this, but the splinter blast is good damage. They just don't have the follow through. No Winter's Curse yet for PPD. Still sitting on that level 5. Yeah. EG still have timings to go for though. As we keep talking about here, once he grabs a level 6. He's so close. We're gonna wait. No reason for EG to actively look for fights before that moment. Their first rotation to go for Matumba Man was successful enough. They can hold on the pace of the game right now, although they would like to get control of this bottom lane back. And Bulba's just gonna send Ion Shells into that because he suspects Liquid might decide to go for him, but Liquid already anticipating that. Both supports hanging around mid. Who got the Tome of Knowledge for EG? Was it, uh, was it PPD? Probably Fear. I'd imagine it was Fear. Uh, actually, PPD just grabbed 6 too. Yeah, PPD just jumped up a little bit, and I think it might have been him, which is kind of interesting. The Bounty Hunter's track is actually put under the Winter's Curse in his hierarchy of ultimates by EG, but we'll see exactly what Peter has planned for us. As you're right, Mind Control, he just keeps on going bottom lane. You know, the trade-offs there for EG up at top to get the tier 1, but that's a Necro 1 done. 11 and a half minutes in by... Uh, by a Beastmaster who had a, you know, a horrific time in lane. He, he couldn't go to lane. He had to go back into jungle and really deal with what he was given. But Mind Control's come back. Yeah, and this is kind of what you expect out of a Beastmaster on the dire side. Usually, uh, with the hawk plus the amount of wards that you set up around this area, you're just going to have the superior vision game and allow yourself to continue to push out bottom. You notice that Mind Control, even at half HP, continues to get aggressive here. What they're going to need is at least one hero just to be here to soak up some of the 6P. That's fear. Be the one to do it. And Liquid trying to get control of the Radiant Jungle. This is a common play from the dire side. As fear, he's near this bottom area, but doesn't have the damage necessary to kill mind control. Gonna need somebody to port on down if they're gonna do this. And it might actually be Bulba who has to come down here and just Ion Shell to push out the wave as Mind Control just continues to sit down here. That's exactly what's happening, and right now it feels like this really interesting game of tug of war between them. We saw EG, you know, three or four minutes ago move up to top, and already Mind Control's gone on by fear and the jump forward. On to that okay, you right, you get gone on. Going in and Bapa turns around on the Bulba as well. Stunt through from Dark Skin Drop. A 3 for nil, and Mind Control's still alive, so Mail wants to join in. He wants to get into the mix of this one, but the Doctor Illusion's through. But uh, he's got the movement speed to get out. 
And EG have no recourse turning this team fight around. Yeah, and this mid lane, they've got to hurry up because oh, some of man's going to go for this. Oh, man. They don't have that glyph available anymore. And if I sound kind of active, it's just because you don't want to lose that mid tower. You see EG already start to make their rotation over, but... Especially to a lone druid who has 3,000 gold almost saved up in the bank. That's where my point was going, this kind of tug of war where EG moved into that enemy safe lane. They looked for the tier one, they looked to try and maybe slow down the Midas and the Relic timing from Matu. But now Liquid are the ones saying, right, we'll give Matuma Man safe time farming away in our jungle. We'll give him tier one mid. We'll set the, the place where we fight basically in your jungle and force you to react to what we're doing. Yeah, because of this away. ward perimeter setup, they always knew how uh, the fight was going to go or how EG were going to approach it, and EG play very reactively. Notice at bottom that the lane is pushing in by a half HP Beastmaster. They react at the exact same time Matuma Man goes for that mid tower. That bottom lane though, no real way to gap close against mind control, so they send AUI forward, but the AA is there with the Ice Blast and the Roar, almost instantly pick him off. EG though, they're going to go for this counter play as Fear hits level 6, and this is the timing that we were waiting for. EG want to take a fight around this track plus uh, Exorcism, but Mid lane is going to be hard for them to take as everybody from EG gathering to go around into the jungle. Bata finally picks up his armor. And Dragonite, and I say finally, 40 minutes in, it's you know, pretty regular timing there, but the uh, Lone Druid Spirit Bear, three seconds stun into Spirit Siphon, and Savage Roar is not going to save you from that. Matsu will lose it, but instantly he summons back. Now he's sitting at 500 away from that relic. They would really like to kill him in this position. Oh. I want to he could slow one. down the radiance at all. Has he died at all? Now he's 0, zero 2 I want this tier 1 mid as well. Liquid, they are all posturing up behind the tower, ready to get in. But PPD, the positioning there, the trouble is, his position is seen perfectly by the Hawk over on the top of the tree line. And PPD is going to be the one that gets gone on. Snowball in, punched up for the Winter's Curse. Not going to throw it just yet. The follow up. The UI's gone out. He's left to fight. PPD's gone. The curse does nothing. As Bulbas chased and Sumail's ulti, they're gonna have to try and waste this one. The ice one back onto the dark side takes him out of the game as well. And EG absolutely falling apart as AUI. He's forced to go in. He's fighting into mind control, but he's losing his life at the same time. Oh, that toggles through, but caught in the ice shards. And Team Liquid, four for nothing, and they save their tier one. They keep Lone Druid alive. Everything is going perfectly for them. That's the Exorcism Force as well as the Winner's Curse. Almost no chance that they're going to defend this tier 1 tower, and I guess that's one way to deal with the Bounty Hunter. Just run into the side of EG, force them to take fights that they can. The track proving to be useless here is they haven't been able to kill anybody. 4 to 12, 15 minutes in, exactly. If you can't kill, the track doesn't give you any gold. PPD slows. We're moving forward, but you can't slow it that much, Pizza! Master and... Might get the bear, though. Oh, can they? The Yule Scepter, Sumail! Pulls it down, and with the Iron Shell, you're right, they pop it. 300, 300, there you go. Nicely done by Sumail and Bulba. But Matumba Man, 4K, saved. Relic is ready. And that Radiance is going to be here by 17 and a half, 18 minutes or so. And we were talking about Liquid and maybe their struggles to deal with the Chaos Knight and his illusions. You can maybe try and phantasm your way out of Nice Blast, you know, weasel your way out of difficult situations. But Liquid so far, they've done a great job at roaring him before he gets the ulti off and making sure that if he does do any damage, it's on meaningless targets. Yes. I think Liquid's decision, by the way, to go for uh, the AA, normally a hero I don't typically like, which is why I favored EG Strap when we were talking about it, but in this game, they made absolute sure that he hit 6 at a reasonable time. Matama Man goes to the jungle as soon as he grabs his Midas, gives AA 5 or 6 waves in a row, he avoids the gank up at top, grabs his level 6 at a really reasonable time, and that's enabled so many of these ganks to happen. So that first Ice Blast we saw, uh, the dire ramp to the jungle is like, hang on a second, Kuroki's level 6 already? Yeah, you usually don't see AAs at this level, but because of how well they handled a Bulba up at top and keeping him level 1, they they were allowed to play a little bit greedier with their supports. Is they're going to go for the smoke, and this might be an off timing because... They don't see anything. Yeah, EG, know for a fact that Matama Man doesn't have the Radiance, and usually this is going to be the timing where you look to take a fight. And that might actually mean a kill, but Sumail's going to break this. As Fada shows himself mid, Liquid was and the scan. scan even hit it. Oh, they don't see it, do they? They know Dragonheart's there. The scan was into the raiding jungle looking for the farmer over into that large camp. But I think EG know. 
Or at least they suspect something. They're playing the body system. But... Oh, Sumail might actually run into this though? Very close. Okay, they're pinging out now. Winter's Curse back onto Kuro. They finish him off with They a... can take him out before his ulti. Nicely done, and now with a Spirit Slife. And there is no Ice Blast here, so Liquid on the retreat. Sumail blocked. Ice shards and he doesn't really have any teammates to follow through on this. Maybe a surge onto him and yeah, there we go forward. Oh, look at that little ball blocking the way. Mind control. Can you TP out of this one? Hey, no vacuums been expended. I think mind control is actually gone. That one play. That one play blocking that tiny little avenue for Sumail to walk through. Yeah, that That's was really well done. And Matumba Man now completes the Radiance. With opting to play for that four man without it. Thought maybe EG would fall for it, but... GG game sense it out, even kill Kuro in that engagement and they're just trying to farm up whatever they can. I don't think they favor their chances in a straight up 5v5 fight, not against this early Radiance and Ice Blast. And so opting to just go for farm, probably need to grab some BKBs on some heroes soon. I think here's the importance of this Ice Blast and what you were saying about it being very hit and miss. When we used to see AA a lot, you know, especially from Chinese teams but back in the day, they used to be using Ice Blast to kind of farm waves and chip away at people, snipe people into the, in the jungle. And I, I guess sniping people was the big thing. Wait for someone to be low HP while they're running away and then catch them. But here, Kuroki, he's just always kind of stoically holding onto it, knowing we need this for team fights. If we get jumped on by a smoke, if we get caught out somewhere by our towers, if we want to try and engage, we need this Ice Blast to try and deal with EG and their heals. Yeah, I do think he is being a little bit too stingy with it. I feel like there are opportunities where he can push out lanes. Okay. Like this top lane, but there's the bear for Liquid to always send up there. And this is what you really want in, an, in a position where you feel like you're at an advantage like Liquid do. Constantly push out the lanes, rotate around, find opportunities to open up. They're playing dire side, so Roshan's always going to be a possibility too. And I think the correct play for Matama Man right now is bring back the bear. Now that top is pushed out, Bulba's gonna have to send one of the Ion Shells over and immediately head over. They are in the pit. They are ready. He's got an Ion Shell up top, otherwise they're gonna know for sure that EG are gonna contest with this. Sumail is building an Ether Lens over on the Death Prophet. I, th I think I've seen this once or twice. And we've seen it a little bit on your know, Tinker and a couple of other mid heroes just trying to amp up that spell damage. I guess it also increases the range on your Yule Scepter and, and Spirit Siphon. Does it increase the damage from Exorcism Ghost oh, they as know. well? Oh, EG, you're gonna get yourself into position though. Are you fast enough? Liquid, they've already taken Roshan down to about a sixth of his health and... Oh, EG. Taking a little bit longer than they like. Invis on Sumail. Did he see Fanta with a Shadow Blade going forward on one Jirak? Maybe he did, but look for the Tusk and the ult. They're up to Fanta's already here. We're back on the two. They're back in the wall, but Liquid, they've still got a roar. They're holding on to it and mind control waiting, biting his time for the perfect target, which might be AUI. Oh, AUI's going to get caught out. Just up with the Dragon Tail. Ah, uh, this looks like it's lights out for Chaos Knight. I mean, Liquid, you're only meant to blow the bloody doors off. Blown up the whole barn, taking out Roshan, killing off EG, the Chaos Knight, the DP. We're off to a roaring start in this series, Blitz. And even with that fight, only does go for EG just because of the two tracks. And this is what EG really needed. If you're gonna trade two of your cores, at least get some of those track kills in return, which they have, but Liquid with that Aegis, of course, gonna favor their fight at bottom fear. Just stalking mind control right now, might have the DPS for this if he plays this correctly. But now with Matumba Man here, probably not going to chance this. Super spooky. Oh, Necros were coming up in about 10 seconds when Fear saw that opportunity as well. And now the Hawks are coming out. MC. Fear's Fear's thinking. Thinking. He really wants to go for something. Telling his teammates he wants to take this fight as Fear might actually go for it. If he hovers over the tree line, he could find the angle. As he's trying to cut this off, he knows that nobody else is here yet. Bato's going to go for EY up at top though. Is this greedy by Liquid pushing three lanes at once? I guess they see the Chaos Knight. Oh, you're right. Fanta, Ice Blast, into stun, into damage, into right clicks, and maybe into death here for AUI dropping lower and lower in the shatter. It's a four Doesn't second stun. Oh, AUI, can you get out of this one? Very nicely done. Well done. Upon the when it goes back with Michael Joel. There's a splint of blast damage as well. So they get the killer bomb and they keep AUI alive. Stroke of fortune though with a four second stun. And I still think he was okay though. Fata was 10 mana shy of being able to cast his Breathe Fire anyways. Oh dearie mate. Radiance Ether, Courier. Ether Lens, Tome of Knowledge, and a couple of Observer Wards, Jirax, right place, right time. That was really lucky that he just happened to be walking by. Yeah.
I mean, he, he walked past and he got this little observer board down, right? Just a uh, sneaky little position there. He's, ah, he's a courier. Thank you very much, EG. I'll take that. But the ether lens force the mail. It seems like an early game fighting item, you know, decent stats, bit of this, bit of that, but amping up your ghost damage, right? That's, uh, that's something that maybe Liquid wouldn't be experienced with, wouldn't really be expecting, because ghosts do a hell of a lot of damage if you're nearby, but you amp it up even more with Ether Lens, and all of a sudden you're being shredded to pieces. Yeah. Kind of think he needs more... Uh, everything. Armor, HP. Armor, HP, resistance, BKB at some point is... Lot of hasted up with the Silver Edge, looking for somebody. Might even run into Fear here, who's about to run into that Sentry range, oh, but saw him. he just passed right by. Fear saw him. Oh, Radiant Sentry, right in place. Yeah, they both pass each other. Is Fear gonna walk into Sentry Vision again, but maybe the Hawk can spot him if he comes up a little bit too close. As EG. Everyone's scanning. Everyone's scanning. AUI knows he's in a really dodgy area there. Council Estate is no place for a Chaos Knight. Get the hell out. Doesn't get him in time. Liquid still have the Aegis, and... Curiously, they still haven't pushed their advantage yet with it. Looking for these one-off opportunities instead of going for just a straight-up fight. Maybe fearing EG's ability to take fights defensively with that Splinter Blast. Up at top. They've got to push out the lanes before they want to go for anything. Is Bulba, Blink Dagger, plus that mech in hand. Although, if they get that AA Ice Blast off. Oh, AUI. The Ice Shard. Really, really well placed there. Actually, oh, jumps the over them, but the Entangled comes through from Mabu with an Ice Blast. And Karoki say goodbye. Chaos and I shred it. And this is the situation they're in, right? AUI always seems to be on one of these side lanes trying to, you know, farm in an area where they know Liquid's not. But Liquid always seems to have every lane pushed out, Blitz. Yeah, they're always making sure that either there's a boar up at top, or they're sending one of the summons in the area to push out a spear. Gonna get roared! Oh, the Necro units firing from the high ground. They chase through with a warrior, but it's a snowball from Jirax. Oh, well, secure the kill. And Liquid... Yeah, starting to run away with this one, it feels. One tier two remaining. Do they still hold on to Aegis? It's gone in about uh, about 30 seconds, but Matuma Man, he's alone at bottom lane. He looks perfectly happy to push on to tier three here while the rest of his team moves in mid. Dragonite up on the high ground. Necro units going. No glyph available either. And without the bounty hunter, EG don't really want to take this fight quite yet, even if they win an even trade. Losing two tier threes at exactly the same time. And the They've got to decide ranks. soon. I go for one or the other. Do they try and go in for the lone druid? You can probably snipe this bear if they're fast. Ah, yeah, I'll try. Aegis is gone, but some man does no longer have oh, mid a piece of life. Hey, why is your voice called the back and back? Bata, they get a kill and a streak. Lost a lot though. EG. Chaos Knight dropping his life and now no vacuum wall. They hold on to Exorcism and the Winter's Curse. They might look for Kuroki now as well. Team being away. You have to spend a stun. You've got to stop him. But PPD had no mana. He could have soul ringed or maybe one did. I don't know if they were still on cooldown. But I didn't want to throw them out to stop the AA from retreating. Still no racks lost. Now that the Aegis is down from Liquid, EG trying to look for a fight. And they still have some ways into this, possibly through the power of track but they keep losing their safe lane carry. And now this Chaos Knight isn't really scaling. I think that's why he decided to go for the Hand of Midas. Understands this game just has to go a little bit later if they're gonna have any sort of hopes. And he still is able to kill the DK very quickly, but up the bottom fear. Equally. Quit off. Very quick at killing off fear. This poor little bounty hunter, level nine with an arcane boots. He's actually got a fair amount of money saved in the bank. I do wonder what he'll aim towards, but a uh, hard to trask recipe is the one thing that kind of piqued my interest on the Chaos Knight. Against an AA who has that shatter ability and a little bit of tick damage, having the armor and heart, you know, they combine nicely together. But it's uh, no BKB. It's one of those odd situations where you don't really want to go for the BKB. It's really o easy to open up onto the CK. You want to make sure that your illusions are hitting hard, but... There are just so many different things that him, both him and Sumail have to go for. Sumail has to get a BKB at some point, but he's only got six armor, and Liquid hit quite hard. They absolutely do. They've got Roar to deal with him too. Up as bottom, they're gonna fire off the ice blast. Trying for this, they will not catch. And EG have two supports sitting behind Sumail. If there was any kind of encroaching there from Liquid into the Radiant Jungle, but Liquid have 
Now switched a little bit from being on the aggressive to playing back a little bit in their own jungle, farming safely. Is it a period of the game where you say, no EG, you're not allowed anything? Do you defend your tier 1s and tier 2s with all you've got? Yes. Or do you, do you look to like slip push a little bit more? You definitely fight this tier 1 battle if EG are actually going to leave their base. Because it could just lead to a high ground push for Liquid thereafter. Hard commit, and EG, they will not commit for this. Yule's back onto the bear and get the I think they just out. have to get out. Oh, hell, PPD might not be able to with Buff coming through. That wind to Y was splashed in too nice. Back you back to the wall. No, not going to last. The Shatter effect doesn't affect. I know you want to turn back on the path of their armor. Talk about it. is getting low. DK. Can he keep himself alive though? He has no life still. Five seconds till that. Still ready to back up, but the mech comes through. Kuroki keeps his teammates alive and falls up. Dropping low. The Radiant's burn is not going to be quite enough, but they still get him. Matsu with a double kill. And Liquid 5 man YP to GG. That is an early GG call. It's 28 minutes in, 10 to 24. Liquid almost averaging a kill a minute as fought at the end. Suicides into the wall, but still dominant performance by them. They largely zone out that bounty hunter, make him ineffective throughout the game, making sure that their ancient apparition got as much space as they possibly could. This was oddly a greedy game by Liquid, but it was calculated greed. And EG, even with that bounty hunter pick that we've seen so highly valued by so many teams, Liquid.